Hello everyone. I am Dr. Deepika Malik. Today we're going to start with industrial production of beer. Beer has always been a popular beverage because it does not deteriorate during long periods of storage and is adaptable to all climates. With various names and in many forms, it has been produced from the earliest times. The beer gets its name from Anglo-Saxon word called beer which means barley. It is an old English language. There is evidence that brewing process was established in Babylon in 6000 BC. At first brewed in the home or in monasteries, beer had become a commercial product in Europe by the late Middle Ages. Egyptians improved upon the process and Romans started its first commercial production. The term beer covers drinks like lager, ale, stout, etc. The addition of hops started in middle of the 6th century. Hops are the flavoring as well as preservative ingredients that are being added to the beer. Coming to the definition of beer, beer is defined as a fermented alcoholic beverage made from barley, wheat, rice, potato, etc. flavored with hops. Beers can be categorized as top fermenting as well as bottom fermenting beer the bottom fermenting beer like lager are produced using bottom fermenting yeasts as you can see in the diagram the yeast are settled at the bottom of the fermenter they ferment at low temperature of 2 to 6 degrees celsius settle in the bottom of wort after fermentation wort is a sugar rich liquid produced by mixing the milled grain with hot water that converts the starches of the crushed grains into sugar the bottom fermenting beer they are characterized by a crisp tasting lighter body and less fruity aroma rounded smooth beer over last 150 years or so lager have become the predominant beers coming to the top fermenting beer like ale and stout stout is also a form of ale They are being produced by top fermenting yeast. They ferment at a temperature of 15 to 19 degrees Celsius. Settle at the top of the wort after doing the fermentation, as you can see in the diagram. They ferment less fully and less discriminately. They are characterized by more fruity flavors and aromas with a malty, full-bodied flavor. Prior to the 1800s, ales were most universal. Now, what is in a beer? first is your barley the body and soul of beer this is a type of a grain and in spite of barley there are other grains as well which can be used which are the main starch source of starch or sugar in your beer making process second is your yeast which is the life of beer hops the spice of beer water the integrity and purity of beer adjuvants additive grains like rice or corn fruit or spices now we'll be discussing all these components one by one in detail first is your starch source or your malted barley or any other grain can be used now the first ingredient in the beer making is your starch source which is your malted barley or any other grain that can be used for its production the starch source is a be- in a beer provides the fermentable material and is a key determinant of the strength and flavor of the beer the most common starch source used in beer is a malted grain grain is malted by soaking it in water allowing it to begin germination and then drying the partially germinated grain in a kiln Malting grain produces enzymes that will allow conversion from starches in the grain into fermentable sugar during the mash process. Barley malt gives beer malty sweet flavor, color and foamy head. Variety of barley malts helps determine the color, texture and flavor of beer. Mainly the barley, botanical name being Hodium vulgare is used but can be produced from wheat, rice or combination of grains. To sum up the grains which are soaked and germinated are called malt these malted or germinated grains produce enzymes that convert starches into fermentable sugars this conversion process is called mashing now the reason we are using these grains is that they are cheaply available they are not used as a staple diet they are low in protein content excess might cause cloudiness it has protective sheath which protects grain from contamination 
These molten grains have two enzymes. First is cytase, which converts the insoluble starch to soluble starch. And second is diastase, which converts the soluble starch to sugar. To the second ingredient in the beer making is the yeast. Brewer's yeast is a catalyst of change. It is a one cell microorganism. It produces carbon dioxide and alcohol after fermentation. Yeast metabolizes the sugars extracted from grains which produce alcohol and carbon dioxide and thereby turns wort into beer. Now wort is the liquid extracted from the mashing process during the brewing of beer or whiskey. In mashing as it was told earlier that the germinated or these malted grains they produce enzymes that convert starches into fermentable sugars. Now two types of yeast are used to produce beer. First is your top fermenting yeast that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae which uh, form your top fermenting beers as the examples we have seen ale and second is your bottom fermenting yeast Saccharomyces carlsbergensis responsible for producing your bottom fermenting beer like lager there are literally thousands of brewers yeast that create for a variety of beer styles as you can see in the diagram the yeast which is acting as a catalyst on getting in contact with the sugar converts the sugar into your carbon dioxide and ethanol now coming to the third most important ingredient of the beer is your hops hops are the female flower clusters or seed cones of the hop plant humulus lupulus which are used as a flavoring and preservative agent in nearly all beers made today hops are used for microbial stabilization hops have antiseptic qualities they have an antibiotic effect that favors the activity of brewer's yeast over less desirable microorganisms. Hop aroma. They provide floral, citrus, herbal, fruity and flowery characteristics or flavor to your beer. Bitterness that balances malt sweetness. And last, your foam stabilization that enhances head properties. There are two primary hop styles or you can say your hop brands. First is your aroma hops, example SARS, Fuggle, Halatua. Second is your bitter hops, example Brewers Gold and Unique. These are the different brand names of your hops that can be used for adding flavors to the beer. Ingredient in beer making is your water. Water makes up to 92% of beer. The quality and mineral content of water affects the character or flavor of beer. Hard water is the water that contains an appreciable quality of dissolved minerals like calcium and magnesium. This kind of water when used in beer making helps in adding crispiness to the beer. Soft water is treated water in which the only iron is sodium and using this soft water adds smoothness to in beer making. Water contains six main salts namely bicarbonate, sodium chloride, calcium, magnesium and sulfate. High level of carbonate will produce acidic mash which will reduce the extraction of sugar from malts. Too much sulfur will give bitterness in brew. Magnesium is an essential ingredient for yeast. Therefore it is important to choose the right quality of water. Next ingredient in the beer is your adjuvants. Adjuvants are added to change the flavor character or profile of beer. They are used to supplement main starch source to provide better foam retention, color or aroma. Adjuvants fall into two categories. First is your grains, example corn, rice, wheat, oats or rye. Or your special ingredients like sweets, honey or maple, fruits, raspberry, cherry or cranberry or spices like cinnamon, coriander or clove. Now coming to the backbone of the topic that is the brewery process. That is your different steps in beer making. As you can see in the diagram, the different steps are total of 16 steps that are responsible for your beer making. First is your steeping, second is your malting, third is sieving, fourth milling, fifth mashing, sixth lottering, seventh boiling, eighth whirlpooling, ninth cooling, tenth fermenting, eleventh maturing, twelfth stabilization, thirteenth filtering. 14th carbonation, 15th pasteurization and lastly 16th packaging and distribution. Now we will be discussing all these steps one by one in detail. First step in beer making process is your steeping. The grains are soaked in huge tank of water, 6 tons of barley and 6800 litres of water at 10 degrees Celsius for 2 to 3 days. 
Some producer change water in between to provide dry resting period and grain gets the air also. Steeping of the grain is done to increase the moisture content up to 40% for germination. Stored grain has only 10% of moisture. Second step in beer making is malting. Malting is the process where barley grain is made ready for brewing. This malting can be divided further divided into three steps. First step is the spreading of the grains in the malt room as you can see in the diagram. Here the grains are taken to the malt room which is very hard. Grains are spread to a depth of 15 to 30 centimeters to allow grain breathe while sprouting. Grains are constantly stirred for uniform breathing and to prevent sprout getting entwined. This process goes on for 6 to 15 days at 12 to 21 degrees Celsius. So basically grains are brought to this malting room where they are spread and they are continuously stirred so that they get air, evenly air and there is a germination that begins here in this malting room only and this continuous stirring prevents the rootlets that are aroused from these grains while germination from getting intertwined. Second part in the malting process is the germination. During this process, the insoluble starch gets converted to maltose and dextrins and rootlets, which are also called as malt cums, which begin to appear. The two enzymes which we have discussed earlier also that are being produced by these greens are cytase that converts the insoluble starch to soluble starch and diastase that converts the soluble starch to sugar. Here grain after germination is referred to as green malt. The last part in the malting process is kilning. Kilning is the heating of germinated barley to dry it and develop flavors where the malt goes through a very high temperature drying in a kiln. Kiln is your bhatti with gradual temperature increase over several years. In this process, the grains are spread on a perforated, tilted floor with a furnace underneath. Grains are dried and the temperature is maintained at 49 degrees Celsius. The extent to which grain should be heated is decided by the type of beer produced. Types of malts for pale malt, the grains are heated at a temperature of 65 degrees Celsius for light ale. For crystal malt, they are heated at 85 degrees Celsius for getting pale ale. And for chocolate malt, the grains are kilned at 225 degrees Celsius for dark beer. To sum up, the grains are hardened, burned and dried in a kiln during the kilning process. In the image, you can see the malted barley. Next step is your sieving. It is done to remove malt gums which are sold as cattle feed. Malt gum, as told earlier, they are the rootlets of your germinated grains. Next step is your milling, that is grinding of the malted grains. In order for the malt components to be rapidly extracted and converted, the malt is milled to obtain coarse flour. When kilning is complete, the grains are now termed malt and they will be milled or crushed to break apart the kernels and expose the cotyledon which contain the majority of carbohydrates and sugars. This makes it easier to extract the sugars during mashing. As you can see the diagram of a grain, outer cover is your sweet coat and perica. Internal layer is your endosperm. Beneath that is your cotyledon. And lastly your embryo in the center of your grain. The next image shows the different grains that can be used for the production of beer. Wheat, rye, barley, rice and oats. After you have obtained the milled or the grinded grains, the next step to look forward for the beer making process is your mashing. Mashing converts the starches released during the malting stage into sugars that can be fermented. The milled grains they are treated with hot water in a large vessel which is known as mash tun. In this mash tun, the mashing process takes place where the conversion of starches into fermentable sugars takes place. The result of the mashing process is a sugar rich liquid or wort of a suitable composition for the kind of beer being produced by varying times, temperatures and pH, which is then strained through the bottom of the mash tun in a process known as lottering. Mashing lasts 2 to 4 hours and finishes with a temperature of approximately 75 degrees Celsius. Next step is the lottering. 
Lottering is the separation or filtration of the wort, which is the sugar-rich liquid extracted during the mashing process. After mashing, the whole volume is filtered in order to separate the spent grains, which is an excellent animal feed, from the wort itself. This is done by passing water through the mash at the right temperature in a filter press or a lotter turn, as you can see in the diagram. This process lasts for around 2 to 3 hours and is conducted at a temperature of 75 to 80 degrees Celsius. Next step is the brewing or boiling of the wort. The diluted and filtered wort is boiled for around 2 hours in a vessel called brew kettle as seen in the diagram. This will sterilize the mixture. Hops and sometimes other ingredients such as herbs or sugars are added at this stage. Now sugar is added to speed up the fermentation, to reduce the bitterness, to give color in the form of caramel or to cause secondary fermentation. This brewing stage is where many chemical reactions take place and where important decisions about flavor, color and aroma of the beer are made. The purpose of boiling is to transform and make soluble the bitter substances in the hops. Hops add flavor, aroma and bitterness to the beer. Boiling eliminates undesirable volatile substances. It also sterilizes the wort, provokes the precipitation of proteins of high molecular weight and it establishes the final concentration of wort. Next step is the verpooling or separation. After boiling, it is necessary to separate the precipitated protein and the insoluble hop components from the hot wort in a vessel called a verpooling or settling tank as you can see in the diagram. Next step is the wort cooling. Before the hopped wort goes into the fermentation tanks, it is cooled to a temperature of around 9 degrees Celsius and aired in sterile condition via a heat exchanger. It is very important to quickly cool the wort to a level where yeast can be added safely as yeast is unable to grow in high temperature. Therefore, it is important to reduce the temperature of the wort by cooling it down so that it can be further added to the fermentation tanks where where yeasts can grow. Now when the wort is ready, it is added to the fermentation tank. Next step that is fermentation takes place when a type of yeast is selected and is added to the same fermentation tank. The addition of yeast in the fermentation tank where the wort is present is called pitching. When the yeast is added to the wort, the fermentation process begins. During fermentation, the wort sugars are converted into alcohols and carbon dioxide. Fermentation takes place at controlled temperatures and lasts around 7 days. At first, it is quite violent, then slows down gradually until the yeast is deposited on the bottom of the tank. After fermentation, the beer is now conditioned, aged or matured. Maturation is the period in which the beer is allowed to rest at suitable temperatures in order for the undesirable volatile components, which might affect the final bucket of the beer to be released. When the fermentation is complete, the brewer may drag the beer into a new tank called a conditioning tank. Conditioning of the beer is the process in which the beer ages, the flavors become smoother and flavors that are unwanted dissipate. After conditioning for a week to several months, the beer may be filtered. The next operation is stabilization. This consists of letting the beer stabilize at temperatures of between 0 to 2 degrees Celsius to permit colloidal stabilization, that is to allow the particles to remain suspended in solution at equilibrium. Further clarification is done that gives the beer its transparency, that is it's a clear limpid. It consists of pumping the liquid through a suitable filter. The filtered beer is then stored in tanks now which are ready to be bottled. Next step is the carbonation that is addition of carbon dioxide to the beer. After carbonation, next step is pasteurization. Before or after bottling, the beer needs to be biologically stabilized. This operation may be carried out by cold sterilization using filters or hot sterilization using pasteurization. In this process, the beer is heated up to 60 to 66 degrees Celsius for less than 20 minutes, which kill the bacteria and remaining yeast which may allow further fermentation. Therefore, it is important for the beer to be pasteurized so that the yeast which was responsible for causing the fermentation in the beer can be killed so that it cannot cause further fermentation after getting bottled. 
The last step in the beer making process is the bottling or packaging. The final stage of the beer production process is transferring the beer into different kinds of containers, bottles, barrels, cans, etc. At the bottling stage, the beer is inserted into different forms, bottles, barrels, can, to enable it to be appreciated with moderation. This slide shows the lifespan of the packaged beers. Bottle beer lasts for six months, canned beer lasts for one year, dot beers, that is beer served from a cask or keg rather than from a bottle or can, as can be seen in the diagram, for 48 hours after being tapped. So now taking a quick review of the steps in beer making. First is steeping, where grains are soaked in water to increase moisture content to 40%. Second is malting, where grains are spread in malting room and then they are germinated and then killed to harden, burn and dry the grains. Third is sieving, to separate the rootlets or malt comes from the grain. Fourth is milling, where grains are grinded to expose majority of sugars and carbohydrates. Fifth, mashing, milled grains is mixed with water to convert starch into sugar. Sixth step is lottering where separation of wort from grains takes place. Seventh is boiling or brewing for sterilization of the wort and to solubilize bitter substances in the hops. Eighth step is whirlpooling or separation to separate precipitated proteins and insoluble hops from the hot wort. Ninth is wort cooling so that the yeast can be added and able to ferment the wort components. Tenth is fermentation, where yeast is pitched into the wort and wort sugars are converted into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Eleventh is conditioning and maturing, so that the flavor in the beer develops and undesirable volatile components dissipate. Twelfth is stabilization, to allow colloidal stabilization, that is to allow the particles to remain suspended in solution. Thirteenth is clarification, to give beer its transparency. Fourteenth is carbonation where carbon dioxide add is added to give beer its fizziness. Fifteenth is pasteurization which kills bacteria and remaining yeast which may allow further fermentation. Sixteenth is bottling or packaging of beer into bottles, barrels or cans. So with this we wind up this topic. For any doubts or queries you can contact me through the given email id. Thank you.